Welcome back to Nisa Soccer here on 11 Sports. Phil Galati with Rocco DiMaiolo for Syracuse Pulse versus Chattanooga FC. And on paper, it's an easy one to write off. The top of the East versus a team with a pretty small lineup that's been struggling a little bit, but there's so much more than that. One big curveball in the way for Syracuse, though, is an injury. And that man, to tell us more about it, is Jaden Becker on the sidelines. Jaden, tell us more. Thank you, guys. I feel a grand entrance every time I make my way onto the broadcast, and I always have to thank you guys for that. Breaking news coming into today's game. Syracuse Pulse's captain, Kyle Newell, is out for this matchup and will be out for the next four to six weeks with a fractured foot. This is a major blow to the team looking to make a turnaround towards a playoff push, but not all is down as Caleb Jackson makes his return to regular season action after a league-mandated suspension. The Pulse seem to have turned the corner while the team's leading scorer was sidelined. Now back, Coach Fuller will look for a team that is more dynamic and more athletic moving forward. Guys? All right, Jane, thank you. We'll be hearing from him a little bit more throughout the game. So let's talk a little bit about this lineup because on paper, it's a little bit different than what Syracuse are used to. Mentioned Caleb Jackson back up top along with Bruno Rendon who started the season as a defender and now plays more of a traditional number nine role but there's another positional change in this lineup for Syracuse because Newell isn't playing. Coach Peter Fuller has taken Zachary Reynolds, who's traditionally a midfielder, and put him in the defensive role. And Rocco, I'm curious to get your thoughts about what that might look like today here at Laser Stadium. Well, I mean, it really goes to show what, you know, the kind of, the kind of trust and the kind of faith that Peter, uh, yeah, Peter Fuller, excuse me, has in all of his guys, you know, Considering the, the the kind of tight spaces that that Syracuse that, that this team is kind of going through, you know the kind of things, the kind of curveballs that they've been thrown, you know all these things, you know considering Bruno Rendon moving up from defense up to the nine roll, and like you said, uh, Zachary Reynolds moving back to where Kyle Newell would play. But I mean, nonetheless, I mean this really just goes to show the kind of trust and faith. Uh, that Peter Fuller has in all of his guys and is able to just understand that, you know, kind of just pinpoint the, the kind of strengths and weaknesses that, he, that other guys have in different roles, considering the ones that they have on paper. So the ball is rolling once again on the campus of Onondaga Community College here in Syracuse, New York. The Pulse attacking right to left, wearing their all yellow home strip that we haven't seen a lot this season. Chattanooga FC, the leaders in the East, wearing the sky blue tops and the navy shorts and socks, going left to right. And Taylor Gray conceding an early foul. Let's talk about Chattanooga for a second as well, because last time out for them was August 10th against Cal Strikers United FC, the top team in the West. And Cal United actually came away with the win in that one, one nothing. It was a late goal as well toward the end of the match. That was Chattanooga's first loss since April 30th. So a massive streak broken. And the last time Chattanooga was here as well, it wasn't the brightest of performance with them. They already have some trouble early with Rendon to McKinley. Russell makes the overlap on the near side to stand one up to the back post. Overhits the run of Louis De Silva there to try and clean it up. And in the end, looks like he'll concede the goal kick for his efforts. No, the referee's pointed to a corner. Oh, good effort there by De Silva. Just trying to get there in time and you know, doing what he can to just try to get there. But, of course, he was obviously boxed off there. But nonetheless, I mean, you know, you, you look at this kind of lineup, and, you know, one thing that I'm seeing differently is it looks like De Silva is actually playing more of the kind of wing, the wing back position that Newell played rather than Reynolds. It kind of looks like Reynolds is playing De Silva's old, you know, normal position. Mm -hmm. And, of course, De Silva, the former... You all been a great day and more of a sweeper usually, but a lot of things changing around. Coach Fuller trying to keep Chattanooga on their toes. First corner of the night finds the head of McKinley. Goes backward toward Louis. Shouts for a foul, but Chattanooga gets a chance to reset. Chipped over the top, and Russell was running onto it, but Reddington will have no problems with it. As it looks like Travis Ward has gone down behind the goal line. And Reddington just going to hurl that one toward the sideline. Hernandez will keep it in play. And earn a foul right by midfield as well for his efforts. Looks like Travis Ward is getting right back up on his feet. He's kind of nursing that lower back a little bit. Kind of kneeling, kind of just crouching down a little bit. I think they're asking for, you know, I think they're just asking for the referee to give a little bit more of a 
some tending to in in his result in his situation, but see what happens here. But nonetheless, I mean, I think that Syracuse is really in these first two minutes have really come out strong, considering the kind of game that they played the last time out. I mean, you know, you look at the the last game; it was all Chattanooga from the start of the first half, and now you know, I mean, considering that they have position right now, but. Syracuse kind of started off pretty well considering their press their pressure. Shouts for Kyle De Silva to go into the book early. The referee's gonna have a stern word with him. Looks like the cards will stay in the pocket for now though. Taylor Gray doing enough to win the challenge. Currently sits tied for third in the golden boot race with six. Ahead of him is Darwin Espinal of Maryland Bobcats with seven, and then of course in first. Uh, the Marcus Nagelstad, 13 matches, 13 goals for the former Providence Friar. Who's in a slump of his own, actually. Hasn't scored in his last two outings. Does have two career goals against the Pulse. Meanwhile, Syracuse haven't scored in over 200 minutes. That could change now as Jackson heads it on. One-on-one. -on -one. Caleb Jackson rounds the keeper. And it's into the back of the net. It's a dream start for the Pulse. Caleb Jackson with the solo effort to put Syracuse up inside five minutes. And Caleb Jackson picking up right where he left off. The last time he played out in a regular season game in Nisa, it was against Chattanooga back on July 2nd, right before his suspension, and he scored then. He's back here on La at Laser Stadium for the first time since he scores today. It is the fifth minute. The Pulse are on top. How many times have we say that so far this season? None. Not, not many. None. <laughs> that is unbelievable. And we talk about the momentum that Syracuse was going to have coming into this game. And it is clearly evident. It's shown. Well, I don't think when Syracuse went to bed last night, when they were dreaming of a start like this, they ever could have predicted it happening. But we talked about it on the pregame show, how training this week was looking a little bit different. The Pulse had two weeks to prepare for this match. They were supposed to go on a trip to the West Coast and play a bunch of different teams out there. That got completely wiped off. And so that gave them plenty of time to look at film, to learn and relearn and shift things around. And just five minutes it took for Caleb Jackson to pick up right where he left off. As our sideline reporter, Jaden Becker, mentioned earlier, he'd been out for a little while. He even joined us in the broadcast booth one time. And the one thing he said as soon as he put down that microphone was, I can't wait to be back on that field. And it took him <laughs> not, not too long to really get back in his stride. Well, that was, that was the game back on July 20th, that very hot day here, at, here in Syracuse, New York, against Chattanooga on July 20th, like I mentioned. And I don't know if you remember, but he said that this year was essentially the the comeback year for him you know when i asked him about how he felt considering all the goals all the important statement goals landmark goals that he scored for syracuse you know the first goal in history first goal in its history at home and all that kind of all that kind of sort of things and you know just essentially you know he he did, he he responded by saying you know this has been this is the comeback year for me Everyone always jokes. Everyone jokes about it in the locker room, but it's true. He's coming into this game with four goals scored. With that one, make it five. And now I see why this is the comeback year for him, considering all the injuries that he had. Because he was at Chattanooga and he tore his meniscus twice. So this is the comeback year, and we see why. Well, we can't put the cart before the horse. Certainly, still a lot of soccer left to be played, and of course, Chattanooga. The last time they were here had probably 80, 85% of the possession during that match as Taylor Gray's cross is easily cut out. It only took Brentford about nine minutes to score against Manchester United, though, so you never know. What was that today? Yes, earlier today? this week. Earlier this week? <laughs> it was a shock result for the Bees. Good on them. Man about it. Manchester United are in a state of their own. That's, <laughs> that's a conversation for another day. Yep, that's for sure. Already Rendon hounding the defender, and Rendon is in. He gets fouled, and that's the last defender. That should surely be a sending off. The referee has gone to his pocket, and it is a red card. It goes from bad to worse for Chattanooga. 
A goal down, and now a man down, and we haven't even played nine minutes yet. <laughs> I mean, can you draw out a better start, a more promising, exciting start for this Syracuse team? You know, they score in the fifth minute. A couple minutes later, they have the rest of the game to play against ten men. I mean, this is, this is the dream start for Syracuse against a team like Chattanooga, who comes into this game 9-3-2. and two. And, and never lost away from home. No, they haven't. So Colin Stripling is given an early bath. That is just the second red card this season for Chattanooga. The first actually came against Syracuse all the way back on July 2nd. Stripling, who has almost 1,200 minutes played this season, will not get to break that mark. And Coach Underwood has a mountain to climb inside 10 minutes at Laser Stadium. Min Jae Kwok standing over it. So too is Juan Louis. Caleb Jackson getting his two cents to the referee. Four on the wall for Alec Reddington. He's only played three matches for Chattanooga FC. He's kept a clean sheet in two of them. Obviously won't be doing that here today. One thing that I've been hearing a lot from Coach Peter Fuller is the set pieces. That's the one thing that they've been struggling to try to get going for the Syracuse, both offensively and defensively. This is going to be a true test to see how they're going to be able to convert on this set piece, see what they're going to be able to do, whether it's a direct shot on net or they're going to have to pass it out first. One or the other, this is going to be a true test for them. Min Jae Kwok has an absolutely devilish right foot, and he's probably practiced this exact scenario many times. Looks like it's just shy of about 30 yards. It's shooting range, but it will take some skill to beat Alec Reddington. Waiting for the referees okay. De Silva stands alone on the far side. Still waiting for the referee to make sure everything's okay. I think what they're waiting for is Colin Stripling to leave the field. He's right here on the near sideline towards the gate, just strolling his way off, taking his time. That's what's taking so long. He has exited the field now. Hawk runs over it. The touch and the bouncer. Not quite what Caleb Jackson had in mind. It didn't really look like Caleb Jackson had all of on it, but I mean, it just didn't seem like he had, you know, anything much on it considering, you know, his, his, his skill set and what we're usually used to seeing out of Caleb Jackson. And it's a decent idea, especially when you have the touch sort of faking that indirect free kick routine and the wall gets a chance to break. Maybe the goalkeeper's line of sight isn't the best, but... Those bobbling free kicks really work best when the goal mouth is not good. And on a turf field, it's pretty consistent throughout. Russell. Waldrop with space to turn. To Silva with his heels on the touchline, like you mentioned, really spreading the width. Kwok, Jackson, lovely one, two, back for Jackson. And just in time is Tate Robertson. Lovely one-touch passing between Caleb Jackson and Min Jae Kwok. We've lovely. spoken on the chemistry from them all year long. Lovely one-two, lovely give and go between Jackson and Kwok. Just looks like that last pass there by Kwok back to Jackson was just a little too much for Jackson to get over. A little too much, a little further away from him considering where he was. But nonetheless, they'll have another chance at it with a throw in here. McKinley against Gray. Dixon receives a shove, but clears it away only as far as Maureen Moosey. Evan Waldrop, rather, on it now. Another cross in. Head off of Waldrop last. It'll be a goal kick. Of course, from our view up here in the booth, it definitely looked like Waldrop tried to bank it off a couple of defenders that were defending him, but of course, the referees down there have a better view than it, of it than, than we do, of course. Waldrop seeing a lot of the ball, playing that traditional six role, something we've seen Michael Kafari do a lot, who's not in the starting 11 today, which means Sean Russell gets the captain's armband. Waldrop, of course, credited with that assist, which was a lovely through ball for Jackson over the top. 
Route 1 can and absolutely will work when you have a forward of Caleb Jackson's caliber. And that's Waldrop's second assist on the season. You have to go all the way back to the Chattanooga game on June the 1st to find that other one. And who really knows how to open up that Chattanooga back line. As the visitors come the other way with it. Great tackle by Waldrop again. Here's Kwok. Going to try his luck from distance and didn't quite catch all of it. Waldrop immediately telling Minje Kwok just to calm things down a bit. They had numbers forward, but very, very promising signs early for the Pulse. Yeah, I mean, it just looked like Kwok was... I understand his idea. I understand what was going through his mind considering how quick the play was moving, but you know, it just looked like he was moving a little bit too far ahead of the play. He did have options to his left and to his right. Pretty sure he had Bruno Rendon to his left. He could have given it out to the wing there, but I mean, nonetheless, if you're Min Jae Kwok, you know, I understand what Evan Waldrop is telling you from behind there. Just give it a little bit more time. Rendon is on side, battling against Robertson. Robertson took some contact upstairs, and that's what he's complaining about. But it will go as a corner in the referee's eyes. And Robertson even held on to Bruno Rendon's right arm a little bit. And that's kind of how the last foul transpired with Stripling. He kind of just picked up on his, on his leg as, as, Brun, as Bruno Rendon was racing in. Seems as though speed from Rendon has really been playing a, a big factor to his advantage, of course. And... Clearly a disadvantage to Chattanooga. Rendon came into this year as a defender by trade. Certainly knows how to play physical. Meanwhile, Tate Robinson has logged over 4,000 career minutes in Nisa. And has certainly played his part in many a back line as the second corner of the night for Syracuse is headed away for now. Right back towards the taker. Now with Kwok. Gray intercepts the pass. Has to hold it up for options. Split pass, can't get by. Looks like Juan Luis putting the pressure on, wins it back for the Pulse. Options in the area. Luis. Good idea for Kwok. Instead, it was a good foot from a defender. Another try from distance, but that volley was always rising. Syracuse, I don't think really used to this kind of time on the ball. But it's time now to talk a little bit more about a midfielder we've talked enough about. So we'll turn it over to Jaden Becker. Jaden, what do you got? Do your best and let God do the rest. That's a quote from Evan Waldrip that he lives by. Although uh, he hasn't been an impact player from when it comes down to the stat sheet and exactly what you see from goal scoring or uh, anything from the offensive stats, he's really been a player to be reckoned with on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, almost every single game, every single match that uh, Pulse has been a part of this part of the season. Coach Fuller argues that Waldrip can be considered a top three player on this team. Fuller also notes that the attitude that Waldrip carries himself with with a quiet man that goes about his business and plays the game the right way. The Pulse look for Waldrop to be a defensive focal point on the press moving forward towards a playoff push. Definitely a focal point in this one as well. Guys? Thank you, Jaden. And he makes a great point that we've talked about with Coach Fuller before. The stats don't tell the full story, and that's really true in any sport, but especially with this one, where you can look at a player who might not have a lot of goals and assists and say, oh, they're a midfielder, they're a wingback, they must not contribute that much. But it's so much more than that. Coach, one of Coach Fuller's favorite lines is to talk about possession because that's such a stat that can be skewed. We've seen Syracuse have games with a lot of possession, but not a lot of real chances. And if you just look at the stat sheet, you say, oh, wow, Syracuse dominated. But especially in that six role or that eight role, more of what Waldrop's playing today, it can be a thankless job. And so far, he's done very well for himself. He's got to help back on defense this time, though. Gets beaten on the wing. And it looked like the ball went out before that shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder challenge, so it'll be a throw for Kyle Da Silva. And that shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder challenge came just from the guy who we were just talking about, Evan Waldrop, doing such a great job in the midfield, just like Peter Fuller mentioned before uh, on the latest episode of Fuller Files that I had hosted on YouTube, on the Syracuse Pulse YouTube page. But I know you're happy to, to, to watch that. But nonetheless, I mean, you know, we talk about Evan Waldrop's ability and you know, he, I, remember him telling him, I remember him telling me, saying, you know, Evan Waldrop has easily been the 
best five or even the best three players on the team so far this season. You know, of course, stats, his stats on paper don't necessarily reflect that. However, if you watch him play and you see how well he does not trying to defend the ball, every time the ball comes to him and he, get, and he gains possession, does such a great job adding pressure, just like he did right there on that far sideline towards the Syracuse bench. Richard Dixon will take it away from danger, but not for very long as that high press from Syracuse. Look at all those yellow shirts. A sight to behold. Now Reddington feeling the heat and just has to stamp it clear. That high press really made the difference for Syracuse in the second half last time these two teams met in late July. They weren't able to play their game for the first 45 and it showed, especially with the one nothing score at halftime that ended up staying hold for the full 90 minutes. But as soon as they got that high pressing gear, they were creating chances. Rendon had a goal chalked off or offside. But plenty of chances to go forward in that match, especially in the late stages, and doing well to play their game here through just about 19 minutes. Wow, time's gone quick. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. This Pulse team is enjoying themselves so far, though. Caleb Jackson not enjoying that decision from the head official. Yeah, a little slight challenge there by Caleb Jackson, but just enough for the referee to blow his whistle. You know, if you're Syracuse right now, I feel like Syracuse is just getting a little bit too far ahead of themselves considering all the events that happened so far in the first almost 20 minutes of this match. You know, if you're Syracuse, I would just say, yes, you have the upper hand. You have the one nothing lead. You're one man up, but just slow things down. Slow the possession down a little bit. Take control and just look up and scan everything first before making a decision. That's what Sean Russell does. He decides to go for the cross, bounces once. Martinez made a bit of a meal of it. Jackson collects the second ball. Moosey has stepped up. Reynolds has dropped back. Look how wide Syracuse have gotten. De Silva takes it a little bit more wide than he meant to. If you heard that, Rocco, you can hear it on the field. Just chill, chill. That's what they're saying to each other. You hit the nail on the head. Just I, slowing things down. You could tell from up here. I mean, they're getting a little too far ahead of themselves. I mean, I understand what's been transpired so far in these last couple minutes. But, oh, wow, look at this. And Rendon thought he felt a little bit of contact, but the 1-2 goes down as a goal kick. Appeals from the pulse bench for a corner will go unanswered. But that was one pass in midfield that looked like it was behind the forward. And then quick one-touch passing, and Rendon was almost in behind one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, from up here, it, it looked like Rendon kind of had that last touch a little bit, only considering where the ball went and how it went in direction. But definitely down at the field, the Syracuse coaching staff saw a little bit of a different thing, obviously. So did Bruno Rendon. Moosey getting chased by Marcus Nagelstad, who was pretty quiet last time out here. Hasn't scored for a couple matches now, as Jackson had some late contact on Richard Dixon, who's still down. The captain for Chattanooga FC will now get some attention. Has it looked like Sean Russell sportingly kicked things out of play? And you, Mark, and you mentioned Marcus Nagelstad. You know, Peter Fuller even mentioned him on the last episode of Fuller Files. You know, how, how, how skilled he is and how privileged he was to coach him uh, at Chattanooga back when he was head coaching there. And, you know, we talk about Marcus Nagelstad, you know, the Norwegian international. You're right, he hasn't scored since July 16th against Flower City Union. It was a 5 to nothing win. For Chattanooga, it was two goals that he scored, and he had an assist in that game as well. So now he's currently on a three-game goal-scoring drought. And it's going to be pretty hard for him to do so here, considering Chattanooga being down ten men, being down one man, excuse me. So the last time Chattanooga were here, they played with four at the back. They started tonight with three, like they did last week. Looks like they'll do that again with Tate Robertson, Number two on the near side, dropping back to fill in the vacancy 
left by Colin Stripling. Staying with two forwards up top, Taylor Gray and Marcus Nagelstein respectively. So it looks like there'll just be one less man in midfield. So Syracuse can really focus its efforts there in terms of slowing things down, maintaining possession. Dangerous to give a lot of space to a player like Min Jae Kwok. Who has really been one of the brighter players for Syracuse offensively this season. Just so good with the ball at his feet. So quick too and speed really kills in his case. Chattanooga doing a great job maintaining possession considering them being one man down right now. But we're not really seeing much of a higher press than we're, than we're used to seeing from Syracuse. You, know, you have Jackson, Rendon, Minjay Kwok, and Juan Louis all up top there. I think they really just are kind of slowing things down. And another thing that's a factor in tonight's game is the weather, obviously. You know, we talked about in the pregame show on the Syracuse Instagram page how down at the field there was, you know, debate as to whether it was going to, you know, there was going to be a game to be played back on July 20th. It was 115, 115 degrees. Right? Wow. 115 degrees down at the field, according to Peter Fuller, from what he told me. And, you know, like he said, there was question as to whether the game would be played. And, of course, it's a much more relaxed night tonight. It's a beautiful night, 76 degrees according to weather.com. Obviously a little bit hotter on the field, but not by much. It was, it's getting cooler. Last night was, I think, around 59 degrees. Doesn't really feel like an August match, but here we are. Lovely chop by De Silva. And Jackson was up for it, but the flag went up. Another challenge in the air on a Chattanooga defender. This time, Tate Robinson feeling all of that one. We'll take a second to get back up on his feet. For a minute, I didn't think Robertson was the victim there. I thought he could have jumped on top of Rendon, but nonetheless, I, you know, it looks like there's going to be a foul called on Syracuse, and it's like referee giving some further instruction on where to start the ball. You know, we talked about the weather earlier, and yes, it is a beautiful night tonight. It's not in the middle of the day like the last time. It's just in the evening, currently 7:31 Eastern Standard Time, 75 degrees according to weather.com, and it's only going to get cooler throughout the night. Looks like it's projected to be 72 degrees once that clock hits 8 p.m. I believe we're in Eastern Daylight Time, are we not? I thought it was Eastern Daylight Standard. Savings? No, I thought it was Eastern. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we'll get up half that. Not, you know, that's pretty far down the list of important right now. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Kenley calling for help. Taylor Gray doing enough to win it back, but only for a moment's notice. Wait, what did I say? Eastern Savings? Eastern Standard. 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 Yeah. That's when it's not Daylight Savings. Now it's Eastern. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I thought it was always Eastern Standard. Factoid of the day. Silva's cross. A little bit too much gravy underneath it. I had my qualms about him playing over there, but so far, Kyle De Silva has done pretty well for himself. We saw a little bit of footwork earlier on the edge of the area. And as soon as he can find that rhythm with that crossing, Chattanooga could be put in a spot of bother. Dixon. Robertson. Mendez peeling away. Passes behind Gray. Scuffle near the sideline, and Waldrop comes away with it. Da Silva. A little bit over the halfway mark of the first 45. It's been all Syracuse so far. And what a story this is shaping up to be. A ping for Russell. Yellow shirt slowly striding forward. Russell won't stand it up this time. McKinley. Kwok has space to turn. Instead will drive at his man. Still Minjay Kwok. The defender in the right place at the right time. Alec Reddington. Didn't have a lot of space to react to that one. Bodies remain forward. Reynolds will try his luck with the cross. Too easy for Martinez to clear away. Now Cerro. Reynolds has to get back. Numbers available, but once again, Waldrop in the right place defensively this time to get in front of that ball intended for Taylor Gray. 
It was a good thing he was there at the right place at the right time to drop back for the missing Zach Reynolds, who was pressing high on that last play. You know, you mentioned how the change in, in, in positions for Peter for Peter Fuller's, Fuller's squad, excuse me, how they have Kyle De Silva more on the outside wing where Kyle Newell would normally play, and Zachary Reynolds playing back as that sweeper position. And it's kind of one of those things where it's kind of what, what, what we kind of expected. I mean, I understand that Kyle Newell was hurt, but, you know, that was definitely going to be a question as to who would play that role where Kyle, you know, who could bring that ball up the field. And it looks like Kyle De Silva is really doing a great job filling in that role. Martinez. Throw in for Chattanooga, right in front of the Pulse bench. Not a lot of players in a five, 10 yard radius for this throw in. Chattanooga know they won't have a lot of time to really condense the shape. Saw last time that they were here, every time they brought those wingers in a little bit more centralized, that was when they were dangerous. And now everybody's forced to play defense. Juan Luis goes down and earns the free kick for his efforts. As it looks like Coach Underwood will be making a change. One man down and one goal down. Pulling out all the stops. Looks like Incero will be done for the day and he's not happy about it. He started every match this season and has tallied over 1,100 minutes. Instead, it'll be Nick Spielman coming in to replace him. Traditionally plays as a defender. That's exactly where he goes and in the middle of that back three. De Silva, Louis, onto his left. Juan Louis deflected towards Rendon if he can take it down. Keeping his hands up, not fouling Robertson who shrugs off the challenge. And Spielman gets his first touch to clear it away. Yeah, Bruno Rondon doing all that he can to use his six foot two stature to, to, to his advantage, if you will, trying to use that to press. But looks like we have Jaden Becker down at the sideline trying to give us a little insight. Jaden, what do you got for us? Thank you, guys. And, and in preparation for any match, many athletes in the world of sports have a routine for themselves to get competition ready, whether that is a lengthy stretch routine, some good music, or even a, a fun outfit as they make their way to the stadium or the pitch. Pulse goaltender Macklin Robinson has a unique preparation tool. And that is a Rubik's Cube. Yes, you heard that right, a Rubik's Cube. He says that it helps him with his hand-eye coordination and getting him mentally prepared for a game day. So imagine yourself coming into a stadium, getting ready uh, with a Rubik's Cube, trying to solve one yourself. He says he could solve it completely. I can only solve one side, so that's as much as I can get for to do there. But we'll see moving forward how much uh, a Rubik's Cube will help Macklin Robinson. And he hasn't really been tested much this evening, but moving forward definitely could be a factor. Guys? Thank you, Jay. And he could probably have been using a Rubik's Cube for the past mm, 31 minutes and change. He hasn't had to do much, but the referee has certainly had a handful, and he's just awarded a yellow card to Nick Spielman, who came on not two minutes ago. And so that's, his, that's his first yellow card of the game. And, you know, we talk about Spielman. This is his, just his sixth appearance so far this season, and he's been, you know, of course, with Chattanooga since 2020. Today, tonight's his 45th appearance. He's had... Two yellow cards back then, but tonight's his third in that Chattanooga blue shirt. And, you know, we talk about Rubik's Cubes, and I think Macklin Robinson really needs to uh, teach me how to do that because I've been trying to figure those out for years. Headed away by Dixon, who played that six role last time Chattanooga was here with the four at the back formation. They've only got three this time. De Silva flicking it on. Rendon puts his hand up. He could have provided that last touch, but just wasn't expecting it. And as I mentioned, Richard Dixon, who has just passed 1,000 minutes on the season tonight, the captain for Chattanooga, playing that six role, 
Went as more of a sweeper because of that sending off for Colin Stripling. And now with the new substitute, Nick Spielman, Dixon has a little bit more chance to just control the tempo and the change of pace and play on defense to offense as he directs traffic for Spielman to receive the pass. Up towards Nagelstad, flicking it on. Hernandez on the other side of it. Numbers queuing up in the area. Hernandez goes down theatrically. There definitely was contact. And the referee has decided the yellow card is suitable punishment for Zachary Reynolds. Yeah, Zachary Reynolds, it's kind of, you know, from up here, you know, it, that is a reasonable yellow card. I mean, he did have his right leg fully extended out and, you know, right in the way of, you know, Alex Hernandez, like you mentioned. And, you know, it's, you know, he, he all he did was, you know, Hernandez was doing a great job, you know, with possession. He was just trying to get away from the defender. And, you know, there was, of course, like you mentioned, full contact there. Of course, Zachary Reynolds, as we mentioned, Tonight making his seventh appearance, his sixth start on the season. And between 2020 and 2021, he's only registered, well, I, don't know, I shouldn't say the word only, but he's registered seven yellow cards in NISA play with Michigan Stars FC. Tonight's his eighth in NISA career. The training ground play, and the Pulse did their homework cutting out that pass. And the volley from Alex McGrath. Not quite as sweet as his first goal here back on July 20th. Saw that exact drawn up scenario from the set piece late July in that last match. And it almost beat Syracuse. But you mentioned in the pregame show, with two weeks not to play, they've done their homework. They've looked at the film. As a player is down on the far side, Syracuse having a little bit of trouble playing out the back for the first time tonight. Looks like that's Nagelstad down there. Free has stopped play for Nagelstad to carry on, holding that right shoulder. The most prolific goal scorer in Nisa this season. The Norwegian, formerly of Hartford Athletic in USL League One. Signed with Chattanooga last season with 15 goals, registered their single season scoring record too shy of that mark this year. And Doan trying to turn. Two defenders on him. Takes it near the corner and eventually loses out to it. Claims he was impeded by Robertson. And that battle early shaping up to be a good one. Not quite the level of maybe the Thomas Tuchel, Antonio Conte fisticuffs earlier. <laughs> but those two certainly have it out for each other. It's a great interception by Dixon in that more familiar role for him. Robertson with the Travella pass, splits two defenders, but ultimately in no man's land. Jackson loses out on the header. Spielman has time to take it down. In the last 10 minutes or so of this half, still one nothing Syracuse. Great sliding challenge by Alex McKinley. Martinez knows he could do nothing about that one. Clean as a whistle. Well, Martinez was asking for a foul there. Thought there was more contact than ball, but from up here, that looked like all ball. There were numbers forward for Syracuse. Only three in that back line, which is how Chattanooga started today. But of course, one less on the pitch after Colin Stripling's red card. Great pass for Caleb Jackson, who just couldn't hold his run in time. And as you heard from the Syracuse bench, or maybe you didn't, we'll tell you, great idea. Great idea indeed. I mean, there was just great passing over there, just at the top of the attacking third for Syracuse. Looked like it was from Juan Luis to Minjay Kwok, who was trying to get it to the overlapping Jackson. Jackson was just too far ahead of the play. Still, like they said on the field, great idea. And Jay Kwok brings it the other way. Jackson, time and space on the near side. Has options in the middle if he can pick one out. It's just a little bit over hit towards Juan Louis. The flag went up anyways for offside. 
Referee overrules it for a goal kick. Louis never really got involved in that play since the ball was out of his reach anyways. You know, it's one of those things where we've seen good turn over here. This is a good opportunity. Louis. Gets it back from Waldrop. Silva's dropped back a little bit. Waldrop wants to turn and burn. Gives that option to Moosey. Look at this space afforded to Russell now on the near side. Motion at the back post. Jackson, or rather Rendon, goes down in the area with a shout. Martinez didn't even look at him. Neither did the referee. The Sky Blues go right the other way. Hernandez. Spielman. Martinez. Heavy first touch, but able to recover. Behind the play, Bruno Rendon and Alec Reddington conver conversing about what just happened there. Gray, one time for Robertson, who's not going to get there. Great communication from Macklin Robinson to his back line. But to Chattanooga's credit, starting to poke holes in the defensive system for Syracuse. Definitely for sure. And, you know, we, we talk about slowing, slowing things down here for Syracuse. And, you know, it looks like they're still just getting a little bit too far ahead of themselves. I mean, I understand they, they're trying to play this high press that, they're, that they've been trying to play and that they've been doing well in doing so. But it looks like Chattanooga has just been doing a great job trying to fill in those gaps considering all that's been transpired so far. De Silva, lovely footwork from the center back, but he goes down under the challenge, rightly so. He stayed down for a minute as well. Hopefully he's all right. Mentioned a little bit earlier, he formerly played D1 soccer at the University of Albany. But what some people might not know is he also ran track for them. Well, that'll help. <laughs> I know that was something my high school coach preached a lot. He wanted everybody to go out for track because... I see a, why. A good track coach can do wonders. <laughs> I see why. It probably explains the great run that he just had. He'll get it again from the set piece as well. Gray blocks the first cross. De Silva won't attempt the second just yet. The yellow shirts still stay at the top of the box. Rendon checks in, has space to wind the shot up. Instead goes to Louis. Louis trying to cut onto his right. And just couldn't put the pressure on Reddington in time. Swing and a miss from Gray. And shouts to Rendon because he would have been onside. Taylor Gray made a deliberate attempt to play the ball. It was Juan Louis, rather, who could have continued the attack. But maybe the ball was out of reach for him. And it's a tough play you know, it's to turn around 180 degrees and continue. I mean, I, under, no, I understand it's one of those things where, I understand it's one of those things for Juan Louis, you know, in your mind you're, you're thinking, you know, you know got to get onside. You know, obviously, in the heat of the moment, you're just trying to get onside. You're trying to do what you have to do. But, and, you know, I, I understand where everyone else is coming from, but you also need to understand... Where Juan Luis was coming from, he was just trying to get onside and do what he was supposed to do or else, you know, in, case, in a case like that, he could have been wrong. A little bit of a shove on the back there in Rendon. That's what he was complaining about, but play will continue. And full credit to Juan Luis as well, who really stepped up in a big way in Caleb Jackson's absence, the Porto Prince native, who now, or well, coming into this game was tied in Jackson uh, for four goals in the season. Now, of course, Jackson has five from that fifth-minute strike. Great play there by Morian Moosey to get himself into the mix and diving in using his six foot five stature to just poke that away. Gray with two defenders to beat on the far side. Gray somehow staying with it, but only for another moment. Now with Min Jae Kwok. Gets his laces underneath it, but easily intercepted by Tate Robertson. Fortunate bounce off the sliding challenge to Hernandez. Couldn't wind one up on the left foot. Now to Gray. 
Chattanooga maintaining possession in the attacking third for the first time in a while. This is the first time really the back line has gotten this far forward as well. Frankie Martinez played the sweeper role in that back four formation last time these two teams met. In the back three, he hasn't gotten forward much, but he's on the ball now very high up the pitch. And a lovely back heel pass as well. Coach Fuller appeals that it went out of bounds and said it's a rough challenge against... Hard to see from here, but it's another yellow card. That not too hard to see. Alec McKinley picks up his first booking of the season. Alec McKinley, I mean, doing a great job to just apply that pressure, but just a little too much. And I mean, I'm not exactly sure how reasonable that was for a yellow, but you know, in, in, in the referee's eyes, obviously down at the field, it was a little bit more rough than what we saw up here. And yeah. Coach Fuller immediately appealed. That ball went out of play before that challenge even happened. So in his eyes, maybe that yellow card doesn't come out of the pocket, but nevertheless, second booking for the Poles, fourth of the match. Three yellow cards, and then of course the straight red to Colin Stripling inside 10 minutes. Just four blue shirts on the edge of the area for Chattanooga. Oh, they're making things in interesting. Well, it was an interesting idea, as you mentioned, but severely under hit cross from Alex McGrath, who hasn't found the form he did last time he was here. I spoke too soon. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Commentator's curse is real. Oh, I believe it. For sure. Robertson. Nagelstad making the run instead with Hernandez on the near side, if he can keep it in play. Moussi across very quickly and wins a goal kick. And gets a round of applause from Macklin Robinson and the home fans for his efforts. Oh, what a great effort there by Morian Moussi. Again, I mentioned earlier, six foot five stature going up against the five foot six stature of Alex Hernandez. Not much he could do there. He's just a, such a big, strong defender, is Morian Moussi. Very big, very strong, like I mentioned. Doing a great job. I mean, of course, from up here, it, it could have, you know, you could have argued that it went off Moosey, but also it's possible. Well, it looks like it's factual now that Hernandez got that last touch. Lovely flick to McKinley as the fourth official has indicated a minimum of three additional minutes to the first 45. Chattanooga, after that substitution, taking off Ian Saro for Nick Spielman, allowing the captain, Richard Dixon, to play more of a midfield role rather than as a center back, has really changed things up. Just takes one lucky bounce to equalize things as Coach Fuller screams at his players. The whole Syracuse bench is up on their feet, arguing for a throw-in. At the throw-in, rather. I thought he was irate at the players, rather the officiating crew, but play will continue. I mean, he could have been doing that, too. <laughs> Falk loses out to Dixon. Martinez. Towards Nagelstad, who continues to struggle. Complains about the pass, but really can probably count the number of touches he's had today on one hand. Yeah, I mean, this is not the Marcus Nagelstad that, you know, we're used to seeing, you know, the 13, the, the, the leading goal scorer in the league for Nisa so far this season. You know, barely has even touched the ball. And there's another turn over there. And like I mentioned, Syracuse just really needs to slow things down. Every ball that seemingly goes to Caleb Jackson, you know, it's either the ball goes right Jackson goes left and vice versa. They really need to slow things down here. Well, it is leading goal scorer with an asterisk. He has 13 on the season. Six of them have come against Flower City Union, which, of course, on that same wavelength, Syracuse's only wins on this season have also come against Flower City Union. But last time out, Nagelstad really didn't see a lot of the ball, and Chattanooga still got the three points. He's on it now, still dribbling, going down. Two hands up for Morian Musi, and play will continue. The ball from Caleb Jackson with a little bit too much swaz on it. Good effort from Louis to try and keep it in play. But boy, that bar the back line for Syracuse was barking a lot at Marcus Nagelstaff for going down there. I know they're selling hot dogs here at the game, but 
a little bit too much mustard that you could put on that pass. Oh, man. I, you, you go hot dogs. I'm like, where is he taking this? Where are we going? That's great. But nonetheless, I mean, I just that was just a little, I mean, too much there for Juan Luis. I mean, I think Caleb Jackson could have taken that up himself a little bit too, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. But you know, he went for that long pass. I'm not sure if Juan Luis could get to it, but I think Jackson could have utilized that space a little bit more. That foul, a little bit more clear cut. Alex McGrath motioning for the set piece to go long. Referee checks his watch. Looks like McGrath will have time to take it. As all the numbers go forward for Chattanooga, why not? In the dying embers of the first 45, might as well throw in the kitchen sink. See if they can find the equalizer on the stroke of halftime. It's hit towards Gray. Dixon underneath it as well. Gray picks up the loose ball and evades the challenge, but not the second. A physical challenge, and the referee says it's not quite legal. And a yellow card as well. That is a little bit harsh. The referee has seen the player get more of the player than the ball. The ball, of course, was won there, but obviously you can't go through the back of a player to win it. And the referee says Sean Russell did just that. That's Russell's third of the year. I'm not sure about that one. I mean, I hate to sound very biased here, but that was a little bit too, that was a little bit too much to give there. For the referee, I mean, I understand you can't challenge a guy from the back like that, but you know, it wasn't the harshest of challenges. I mean, I'd have to look at that replay again, but he tried to get more ball, if anything, but and it looked like he did, considering how far the ball went away. Nonetheless, it'll be a yellow card for him and a free kick, another one for Chattanooga. Two of four in the back line for Syracuse on a yellow, and with Kyle Newell injured, there aren't a lot of options on that bench to replace them. Across to the back post is easy for Macklin Robinson to claim, and that'll wrap up the first 45. A bright start for Syracuse. Has fizzled out just a little bit, but still plenty to take away from, positively at least, for the Pulse in the first half. 1-0 for Syracuse, as it looks like Sean Russell will still be talking to the officiating crew about that yellow card. Evan Waldrop doing his best just drag Russell away from the referees. Got to de-escalate. You know, he's got one easily. Another one could be pulled out at any time. You know, one wrong word to, to, to say to these referees, and you know, they'll, they'll, they'll make you pay for it for sure. But pretty soon we're going to be hearing from Jaden Becker, who's going to be down at the field with head coach Peter Fuller. But I mean, you know, we, we talk about, you know, the, the, the way this game transpired in the first 10 minutes. It was all Syracuse. But, I mean, nonetheless, looks like Chattanooga kind of picked up where they left off and what they're normally usually used to playing in terms of possession and pressure. And it looks like Jaden Becker is ready with head coach Peter Fuller. So, Jaden, over to you. Here with head coach Peter Fuller. Glad to have you back. And after a strong first half, what was that main focus in the first half going in and obviously turned out to be successful? What's it look like moving forward? We had we had three keys kind of coming into the this game with these guys. They were obviously very, very good in possession and have clearly dominated it when they, we've played them the previous three times. So basically we wanted to try and limit their time on the ball by by pressing, getting further up the pitch, putting them under more pressure. Um, second thing that we wanted to do is is we wanted to keep it. See if we couldn't keep it for 15, 20, 30 seconds at times try and basically try and balance that particular end of the game off a little bit. And the third thing is when they did break, break us down and, and uh, get beyond us, how quickly could we get back behind the ball and regroup and set, a, set a, a mid or a low block to be able to defend. So I think we've done a good job with it. Obviously the red cards changed the game a little bit. Um, although I thought they're getting themselves back into it. The change that they made with Spielman at the back has, you know, steadied the ship for them a little bit. and, and uh, they're, you know, listen, they're one of the two best teams in the league. So um, going down a man is not going to affect them. So um, we've got to keep playing. We've got to keep doing the things that we need to do to be successful. We're a little antsy on the ball. I think, you know, getting up early, I think probably uh, 
maybe surprised us a little bit, um, although I'm not surprised. We've had a great week of training, and it's been coming. So um, I thought we had a good game plan coming into this weekend, and the guys have done a good job with it. Strong, very strong in the first half. What's going to be your message to this team in the halftime locker room moving forward? There's two or three, I think, little tactical things that we'll, that we'll want to do that I think will take advantage of the fact that we're up a man. Um, but the other side of it is, too, be brave. Keep trying to play. Um, let's not uh, um, let's not let's not just sit back. Let's get after them. Um, but obviously, be smart about it. Uh, we're up a goal and we're up a man. So let's uh, let's see if we can't see this thing out and collect some points and uh, get ourselves back in the playoff race. Be brave and be smart. Thank you, Coach. Really appreciate it. Guys, back to you. Well, some wise words from Coach Fuller, and that'll wrap it up for the first half. But don't go anywhere. The second half and more. Coming up right here on 11 Sports. We'll be back in just a little bit. Welcome back on 11sports.com for some NISA soccer. Phil Galati and Rocco DiMaio here at Laser Stadium in Syracuse, New York. If you missed the first 45, it's 1-0 Syracuse off the foot of Caleb Jackson. But the forward for Chattanooga FC, who leads the league in scoring, has been very quiet. Our sideline reporter, Jane Becker, has more. Jaden, what do you got for us? Thank you, guys. And for a moment, I would like to talk about Chattanooga star Nagelstad, Marcus Nagelstad. He's been an impact for Chattanooga almost the entirety of their season, obviously being their leading goal scorer. And one thing that he spoke about back on his goal scoring rampage is saying, quote, once you're on a roll, you don't have that doubt in your mind. You know you can score and just go out there and do it. You go on autopilot when you are in the zone. That's what Nagelstad said. And it seems like the Pulse, even though Nagelstad has been on autopilot seemingly all season, has put on some turbulence onto his run so far, especially in this game. Almost no action as it seems. I had to go up to the booth to make sure and confirm with you guys that Nagelstad was on the pitch here this evening, just to make sure that the star player for Chattanooga is actually on the pitch here tonight. He is, and obviously the Pulse has put on a much of a factor here, and it's going to be a factor moving forward, especially with the defense being so strong. Guys? Well, and it's funny to talk about it too, because the last time these two teams met in late July, Marcus Nagelstad was absent during that one too. He didn't get on the score sheet. He didn't get a lot of touches, but Chattanooga still won one nothing and took all three points back to Tennessee. As the visitors will take their time to kick off the second. Looks like Syracuse made a halftime substitution. Steven McDonald's in. Looks like he's in for Bruno Rendon. Rendon had a personal vendetta against Tate Robertson over on the far side, who now is tasked with defending Caleb Jackson. And does enough to make sure that Jackson's cross isn't a good one. De Silva chase it down to no avail. A couple substitutions, actually. One for Chattanooga as well. Looks like Alex Hernandez, who saw some bright spots toward the end of the first 45 on this near sideline. His day is done. Brett Jones will replace him. The California native, the former UC San Diego player who has played the full 90 in the last four straight. And will get 45 here today. Yeah, tonight he's making his 14th appearance of the season. And he did have a goal on the season as well. He scored on June 18th, and that was against, I believe that was against uh, Bay City, excuse me. So that was a, that, that game was a three to nothing win back on June 18th. It was on the road, so three points, three nothing win on the road. I mean, that's, of course, a good thing there. See how he'll be able to translate what he did back then into tonight with that substitution now that he's on the pitch. Early free kick for Syracuse just outside the circle. Reynolds standing over it. It's a dainty chip. It's headed into a dangerous area from a Chattanooga player. The visitors still quite haven't cleared their lines. Russell. Quack. One time ball is short for Jackson. Back with Sean Russell. Here's Quack. Forwards queuing up in the area. Quack goes himself and goes down. Is that inside the box? The referee says not quite. It looked just outside of it, but it was very close indeed. No, it was definitely very close, Philip. And, you know, I, 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 I kind of already knew that that wasn't going to be a penalty. I mean, it was, you know, you, you could tell it was just outside. But nonetheless, I mean, good job there by Quack. 
able to draw the foul using his speed, trying to cut inside, cut the defense. The defense was able to get him just in time to pull him down. And good job there by Kwok, like I said, to draw that foul and bring in a good set piece very, very close to the area. And a little bit fortunate, I think, not to get a yellow card as well, especially considering the track record in that first half of sending off a couple yellow cards late, especially for the Pulse defenders, half of whom are on a yellow card, and with Kyle Newell out for an injury, who usually starts in Coach Fuller's back line. Not a lot of options from that bench should things turn to 10 v 10. For now, it's still a man advantage and a goal advantage, looking to double that from the set piece to the front post. Headed away from danger, only as far as Waldrop. Back for Kwok, who's going to have work to do to keep that in play. And eventually wins a corner for his efforts. Kwok drawing fouls, and now he's drawing a corner. Good job there. Able to use his speed to get to the ball right in time and was able to bank it off a defender there from Chattanooga. Able to draw that corner kick and get another set piece here for Syracuse. This time from the corner flag on the far side. And it's going to be the same man to take it. Zach Reynolds. We saw Minjay Kwok play more of a 10 role in the first 45, just sitting behind the forwards, doing some work, making sure they were getting passes through. But this time looks like he's a little bit more of an attacking presence, especially on that far side in the early stages of the second half. Believe the fifth corner of the night, all of them have gone to Syracuse. Haven't made anything of it just yet. And still won't. Second ball in deflected out of play. Chattanooga throwing everybody back to defend. Russell will trot over to take the throw. You know, on a corner kick like that, I mean, I just feel that Zach Rollins could have done a little bit of a better job to just on his delivery, if anything, just try to get that ball a little bit higher into the box and look for someone that's a little bit to draw back a little higher. Flicked on. Bouncing toward the front post, and Waldrop was near it. Looked like he might have got a piece of Reddington, who is hot and was very quickly on his feet. Took it in Waldrop's ear. The play has restarted just as quickly. Nagelstad will keep it in play. And through five minutes, that's all that Chattanooga has seen, really. Very much akin to the first 45 in the sense that Syracuse are out of the gates well. Something that Coach Fuller talked at halftime was being smart and being brave. They can't rest on their haunches. It's only a one-goal lead, even if they do have the man advantage, but about attacking smartly as the two defenders on him. That was a poor giveaway. But eventually numbers back, including Zach Reynolds, able to stamp it up toward midfield. Chattanooga work it right back into a dangerous spot. Lucy leaves his feet but doesn't get the ball. Chipped in towards Nagelstad and puts his arm up apologetically, but it didn't take long for Chattanooga to come right back down the field. Now De Silva, solid pass for Waldrip. De Silva back in support. One time cross and goes down under the challenge. Referee plays advantage, it's a good volley from distance. McKinley caught that very well and Reddington wasn't in a good spot. Well had that ball go in, I would have told this, I mean if any, anyone would have just told De Silva to just cool it down a little bit but I understand where De Silva was coming considering the foul but on the other side there McKinley just do, they're at the right place at the right time doing a great job off the volley to drill that ball on target and almost catching Reddington off his line you know he was trying to go to the, to the other side to his right side where Reddington was still set on the left and just like that I mean he Reddington do, did a great job trying to dive to the other way to make the save, and he and he did just so beautifully. But it took some effort, and for a minute, it looked very, very promising from from McKinley. 
It's a solid hit. He caught all of it, kept it low toward the corner. Just not quite enough pace on it, but as mentioned just a minute ago, being brave, taking shots. That's a hospital pass of sorts. And Gray could be in behind. That's a tug for Morian Moosey. And Morian Moosey could be off here. This could be 10 men versus 10 men. The referee has a decision to make. It's only a yellow. Taylor Gray is flabbergasted at that decision. And Morian Moosey, who conceded a penalty in a 2-1 loss to Chattanooga a couple weeks ago, that ended up being the deciding goal might be counting his lucky stars to still be on the pitch in the 54th minute. Absolutely, I mean, he, he caught a break after two fouls that I feel the day he committed from what it looked like up here. I mean, it was that one grab initially that slowed him down, and then it was the, the, the last shove that ended up making the referee blow the whistle, and you, know, you were able to just see everyone on the Chattanooga bench get up off their feet, raise their arms, and you can even see one of the assistant coaches go over to the fourth official and give him some word. But man, did Morian Moosey catch a break with just getting a yellow card. You know, a yellow card is not a good thing, but he's probably smiling at that yellow card. Very lucky that he didn't get a red there. That's his fourth of the season, and now in a back line of four players, only one of them, Kyle Da Silva, has not gone into the referee's book. And with only one, maybe two real replacements on the bench for the Pulse, things have gone from bad to worse. A tightrope to walk now. Chattanooga key to upset the balance from the free kick. Marcus Nagelstad has scored many of these in his time. Scored one for Providence back in 2014 to send the Division I program to its first Elite Eight appearance in the NCAA tournament. Scored a few for Hartford Athletic. And this is a very appetizing distance for the Norwegian. It is Nagelstadt's free kick into the wall. The sea of yellow does its job. The Silva getting up to head it out of bounds. Oh, great job there by the wall. It was Caleb Jackson that was in there as well. I'm not sure exactly who else was in there, but I knew Minjay Kwok was getting ready for the overlapping pass right behind the wall. But nonetheless, what a great effort there. Standing tall, jumping high. Gray, 1-2 with Dixon. It's Taylor Gray. Never really got a hold of it. Pushed away from goal at the last second before he could really set that plant foot. But again, Chattanooga, to their credit, have played very well in the last 20 minutes or so. Really, you go back to the end of that first half. You might not be able to tell they're down a man if you were just tuning in. Absolutely. And, you know, they're, they're really showing what what they're in for. And, you know, they're, 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 they're showing that despite this... The, all the disadvantages that they're at, they, they know, they're, they're down one nothing, They're down a man. And, you know, considering all of that, you could tell that, you know, they're still the Chattanooga that everyone is so used to seeing. So great in possession, great in pressure as well. Syracuse might have a chance here if numbers can get forward. Instead, Tate Robertson doesn't defend it as well as he should. Louis we'll trying to take it down. Quack on the volley! Just getting a little bit under it. A tough chance as it was bouncing up as he went to strike it, but fair play to the midfielder for trying to take that opportunity. Ward pleads for the foul, the referee obliges. Yeah, Ward was not happy with Juan Luis just grabbing a little bit of that shirt and they're having a little conversation about it right now. Juan Luis claiming that it wasn't even that bad. Well, a sharp pull is a yellow card by the letter of the law. And the Pulse have gotten their fair share of bookings tonight as another poor clearance out of the back. Taylor Gray taking it down, striking it cleanly, but a defender in the way. Falls on the volley, a wicked deflection. De Silva chasing it down, and if in doubt, booted out. <laughs> and some of the younger fans will be 
going into New Jersey to go try and chase that one down. <laughs> they got a little excited, and <laughs> knowing my nine-year-old self, I probably would have gotten oh, excited absolutely. too. That's a long walk, though. <laughs> In the dark, you're going to get bit by mosquitoes. Probably smart just to leave that one over there. We'll you're, get going it later. To, you're going into the roads. you got to be careful. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, a quarter for Chattanooga. A chance they have seldom had tonight. Dead ball opportunity from the edge of the pitch. Plenty of blue shirts forward to attack it as well. All peppering the goal line, which is a tactic that Syracuse has used time and time again. It's to the near post, but it won't even stay in play. Robinson seeing it all the way. Yeah, I knew what he was trying to do. He was, of course, he was trying to go near post as near as possible to the post and try to find someone to just tap that in with their head, but a little bit too much there, too much curl on it. Frankie Martinez, the center back, urging his players to turn and face, already getting ready for the next opportunity. Can't cry over spilled milk. We saw a lot of Martinez back in late July, really dictating the play when Chattanooga had 80, maybe 85% of the possession in that match. The former UMass Lowell River Hawk, Stumptown player. Now with Marcus Nagelstad, one-on-one, -on -one, cuts onto his right, trying to wriggle free, and three yellow shirts in the way. Still need to get it away from danger. Dixon chases down the loose ball. Lovely roulette pass on the nutmeg as well. Chattanooga breaking up the skills. But it's a poor back pass that'll allow Syracuse to step up. Sliding challenge from McDonald, who claims Martinez got the last touch. The officiating crew disagrees. Just enough on that one to find Nagelstad. Travella pass into the path of McGrath, who quickly sees it cut away from him. Now Jackson, weathering the storm. Holds it up well. McDonald is wide open on the near side. If he can take it down, it's McDonald! And Reddington was at the right place at the right time to get his... Hands on that one, not really testing him as much as McDonald would have hoped. The clock was ticking there for McDonald to settle that ball and get a shot off. Chattanooga's turn to put on the pressure. Just as quickly, Minjay Kwok wants to go the other way. One, two. McDonald with time to turn. Look at the space afforded in midfield. Juan Louis. Only one player in the box, but we will have to wait a minute. As now those yellow kits will slowly stride forward. Wall drip. Syracuse doing a good job to slow it down while they have possession in space. What we were preaching about earlier in the first half. Louis Da Silva. And leathered that one. Not quite the graceful touch that Cross was asking for. Not sure what the Silva was thinking there. He just had way too much on that one. Just get that ball, just a little tap into the box. And you just want to, just a little tap, believe it or not, will just will go far away, but it looks like he just drilled that to the far sideline. But on the whole, Kyle De Silva has played very well today, and a somewhat unfamiliar role really holds down more of a sweeper position. And today, called to the far side rather the near side this time around in place of the injured Kyle Newell. Has been doing a pretty good job so far, both defensively and offensively. Outside back, one of the most demanding positions in the modern game. As De Silva has acreage of his own again, striding past the letters in midfield for Louis. Jackson is making the run on the far side. Quack sees him but can't pick him out just yet. Instead it'll be Russell on the far side of the pitch. Kwok, McKinley. Just knocking it around, waiting for that open run. And speaking of waiting, De Silva apparently didn't wait to make his run. He doesn't think so, but the flag has gone up for offside. Yeah, it looks pretty casual from up here, but assistant referee saw it from, from right where he was standing. Had a clear view of the Silva right in front of him, but you know we we saw we saw a couple times earlier in the first half where 
Syracuse got caught a couple times being offsides, and I feel like there's been a little bit of a problem for them throughout this game. And, of course, the last time they, that these two teams met where Bruno Rendon put the ball in the net, but he was caught offsides as well. And the restart has been delayed, which can be a yellow card. McKinley won't get one this time around. And he's thankful for that as well because he's already on a yellow. The Chattanooga bench were calling for it. Russell, very physical header. Not one to back down from a challenge, Sean Russell. Now Louis just couldn't time the spin correctly. But kept the ball in play. Travis, Once. Travis Ward, excuse me, was complaining and, and asking for a for a out of bounds call, but he had a quick discussion with the assistant there. Referee waves advantage. Gray felt the contact, but kept the attack alive. Ward with a skipper Dixon. Back to Ward. Goes past Louis. Wants the one two. Instead, Gray turns the other way. Couple numbers on the far side. The question is, how will Chattanooga get the ball there? Martinez doesn't have the answer. Has some space now. Likes to chip it through three bodies and that was never gonna come off. Travis Ward to take the throw in. Has two defenders to beat. Evan Waldrop doing well defensively once again, as sideline reporter Jane Becker told us about in the first half. Our Coach Fuller thinks he's a top three player on the team, as Richard Dixon's captain's armband was torn off. Not often you see that happen. Looks like it's still intact, as the attack stays intact for Chattanooga. Fancy footwork on the far side, and Kwok wins it anyways. Good play there by Kwok. Out of McDonald. Had three defenders to beat and was always going to be an uphill battle, but it's a throw in right in front of the Pulse bench. McDonald battling for it with Robertson. Robertson wins the free kick, but the restart too quick for the referee's liking. That whistle could have easily gone either way. Both players battling hard for it. Getting a grip on one another. Just so happens that he, referee was able to give the foul over to Syracuse. And it may not be too far-fetched to say this match might only finish with 20 players. With how many players are on a yellow card and how physical this game continues to be. As Nagelshad plays the 1-2 for Gray who is offside. The official doesn't hesitate to flag on that one. And Gray offers no complaints. The man tied for third in the Golden Boot race. Had a hat trick against Bay Cities on May 28th, then scored the next week versus Syracuse, and most recently on August the 6th in that 3 0 win against Maryland Bobcats. Like we mentioned in the last game, how Taylor Gray had a successful college career. For uh, first attending Lee's McGray University, playing 38 games there and starting in 26, scoring four and assisting in nine goals in his tenure there. And the former USL League Two forward of the year as well. Juan Louis will try his luck. Just put a little bit too much under it. Never really bent back toward the goal. But absolutely. Try your luck from there. Juan Luis happy to oblige. Searching his fifth of the season. Martinez will step up. Gray has time to turn. Nagelstadt drops back. The sliding challenge wins the ball. McKinley a bit shaken up. But wins it back for Syracuse. Here's Kwok. Jackson. Plays the one two a little bit too late. I just wish Jackson was a little bit smarter with that ball. I mean, he knew. I understand he was trying to give it back to Minjay Kwok, who was probably calling for it, but 
you know, in, in terms of ball placement, you got to understand that if a man's running in, you got to be considerate of where you got to place that ball. McDonald is offside. Juan Luis tried to hold it up as long as he could. And you can see McDonald, as soon as he got that ball, he immediately looked at the official whose flag was already halfway up. <laughs> And again, and again, it's these offsides calls that have been called a lot tonight against Syracuse, and it's just one of those things where you got to really, if you're on that front line, if you're McDonald, if you're whoever it is, you got to really be aware and a little bit more considerate of your positioning. Try not to get too far ahead of the play. I mean, I understand that's the oldest tip in the book, but looks like they could use it. Here is McDonald for Jackson. Now Louis. Juan Louis thinking about the shot again. Instead, it's for Caleb Jackson. Body in the way. McKinley trying to keep the attack alive. De Silva drops back and is onside. Kyle De Silva thinking about the one-on-one. -on -one. Instead, the defender elects to bring Evan Waldrop into the attack. He thought about putting on his dancing shoes. <laughs> he thought about it. it. As Lucy is thinking about how that one got away from him too much underneath it. Another thing Coach Fuller talked about at halftime was recovery, especially with trying to go forward and getting that second goal and not resting on their laurels with just a one goal advantage. It's all about how this team can recover defensively. So far they've done an all right job, but Chattanooga certainly testing the medal. Russell wins the header. Gray knocks it back down to earth. As Chattanooga will just drop back a little bit. Marcus Nagelstad looks alone up there. Started with two forwards on paper, and then after the red card, Chattanooga stayed with two forwards. But now Marcus Nagelstad has been given more of a free roaming role with wingers and support as it looks like there will be changes in the offing. Rocco has more on it. And it looks like, I believe that's Michael Kafari who will be entering the game for Syracuse. He'll be replacing Alec McKinley. Of course, we know Alec McKinley's been doing a great job in, in his defensive role and doing a great job. And according to Peter Fuller, who he feels has really stepped up and improved since joining Syracuse. Michael Kafari, this is his first appearance since July 8th against that against uh, excuse me Flower City Union in that four to nothing thriller here at Laser Stadium. So a good substitution in your eyes. I mean McKinley obviously on a yellow card and nearly got a second for time wasting, but Kafari, who's usually played more of a six role, looks like he's already slid into it and forced Waldrop to go a little bit higher. Solid substitution for you, Rocco. Absolutely. I mean we're so. Yeah, I'm sure you're you're very knowledgeable of this too, and you know Michael Kafari, very very skillful in in his position, and you know we've been hearing from all season long ever since his injury that he was kind of nursing a little bit, how how he was dreading to just get back on the field. Brilliantly timed challenge from Kyle De Silva to win things back for the Pulse, as Kafari gets his first touches, and wants it right back. For Kafari, it was an injury, and it was also that yellow card accumulation that he had to serve suspension for. No one in the league with more bookings than him. He'll do well to stay out of the referee's pocket tonight. Louis to Silva. Jackson breaks away. Now gets it from De Silva. Thought about teeing one up, but a little bit far away to try his luck. Now Russell taking his spatial liberties on the far side, driving at his man. No one showing at the top of the area. There's a huge gap right by the referee and is now filled by the captain for Chattanooga, Richard Dixon. But for a second there, begging for somebody to drop behind the play and work one in. Chattanooga doing a great job to apply the pressure. Quack feels the pressure and releases Louis. One more for De Silva. Flag stays down. Looks like the defender got a piece of the cross, but Sean Russell given plenty of time to take it down and then some. Into the last 18 minutes or so 
of the match. Jackson afforded the turn, cuts it back from NJ Kwok. Just swiped across it a little bit too eagerly and wow. knows he could have done better. That was looking a little bit promising, I must say. Caleb Jackson, I mean, I thought the trailing defender that was coming in was going to try to sweep that one away before it even got to Kwok, but he did a great job reading that play, seeing where the defender was, how much time he had. But Kwok just could not get enough on it. That's what I mentioned that first chance a couple minutes ago was just somebody to cut back to the top of the box. Kwok did it that time to his credit, just couldn't find the finish, but all about that patience, just keeping it in an attacking area. You don't have to shoot from the top of the six to test the goalkeeper. Just leaving one attacker a little bit behind the line opens up so much more space, especially with one less defender as a presence. McDonald for Waldrep. Tries a curler, and Reddington got two hands for it, but was certainly scramble. Is a little bit smarter, as Coach Fuller mentioned, a little bit brighter for Syracuse offensively. They're finding chances. They're finding opportunities, utilizing their open space, and, of course, getting more shots on target. That's the kind of Syracuse that we've been dreading to see all season and, of course, throughout certain moments of this game where it looked like Chattanooga was in control considering their disadvantages. Looks like Russell striding forward again. The foul is called. How much work has he done today, especially offensively in the last 10, 15 minutes maybe? Just going so far forward. Definitely for sure. And, you know, we just talk about all these players on this team and uh, for Syracuse, and we, we have plenty of discussions. Jackson finds the free header. Reddington was scrambling for it, but a body was in the way before he ever saw it. Like I mentioned, we have, we've had plenty of, of of discussions with, you know, certain players and, 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 and coach as well, considering how, how things have been going for Syracuse and individual players' improvements and development. You know, Peter Fuller seems to be so fulfilled with everything going on. The Silva. That was a cannon of a throw. And a creative flick from McDonald finds a blue shirt in Frankie Martinez. Ward. McGrath in support, dispossessed by Waldrop, who's breaking forward. Quack couldn't get in behind his man. Dixon with the tackle, now brings it the other way. Nagelstad forced to check back. This time gets his pass away. Look at Minje Kwok putting in the effort. Dixon wanted the foul, but play will continue with the visitors. Martinez. Searching ball to the far side. That Russell will shield out of play. Gets a shoulder in the back, but sporting from Russell, who is immediately helped to his feet and doesn't offer any complaints, nor does the player at fault for the challenge. Let's talk to Jaden Becker for a mo. Jaden, what you got? Thank you, guys. And Coach Rod Underwood, coach for Chattanooga FC, recently spoke with uh, Nisa Soccer saying, quote, we feel really good about where we are, and we feel extremely excited about where we can go. And you, often when we speak with Coach Rod Underwood, we've seen him multiple times here on the pitch uh, for the Pulse here in Onondaga. Uh, we've been able to talk to him and his fantastic adjectives that he would use and the ways that he would describe the game and the ways that he would coach his players, often saying, uh, I wouldn't want to call them generic terms to his players, but terms that you would often hear over and over over and over again as if you're watching a sports movie he would use pretty often with his players and he's had seemingly been able to get through to them throughout the entirety of their season right now those t the language and that terminology might not be getting through as the game is not going in their favor as we get into these last 15 minutes here on the pitch you can definitely see some great pushes from Chattanooga as we definitely know them that they can three top goal sc scorers and Nisa looking to prove themselves here in this one guys well I think a big reason for that is the history that Coach Underwood has with these players was on the coaching staff at Stumptown AC last season, first at the helm for Chattanooga this year, and he brought a couple starters with him tonight, Tate Robertson, Frankie Martinez, Alex McGrath. So these are players that 
know him and know his coaching style and wanted to continue playing under him. That just goes to show how much confidence the players have in Coach Rod Underwood and his system and how well he knows how to read every player and how to use them to their biggest, their best and biggest strengths. As it looks like we'll see a substitution here for Chattanooga. And it looks like number 28, Damian Rodriguez, will be coming in for the Norwegian Marcus Nagelstad. Wow. So that's that's my that's kind of that was my reaction, but you beat me to it. <laughs> He's been quiet as a foul throw has been called. Not often you see that in professional soccer, but a substitution, change in attack, as well as that yellow card earlier for Brett Jones on the challenge on Sean Russell shortly before we threw it over to our sideline reporter, Jane Becker. As now, player might be in behind. Could this be two for Syracuse? It's two for Caleb Jackson as well. Unbelievable. The Eastern Conference leaders have been shocked at Laser Stadium. And it is a party in the 3-1-5. And Caleb Jackson is the man who leads the celebrations with two goals tonight. It's 2-0 Syracuse. Well, the players are dancing. The fans are dancing. Look at these kids down over here at the front row doing the gritty. <laughs> Welcome, what a, what a welcome back for Caleb Jackson. No better way to do it. I mean, comes back first time since playing the same Chattanooga team back on July 2nd. And what a better way to score not one, but two goals. First in the earlier moments of this game, in the fifth minute. Now, drilling that nail into the coffin just a little bit deeper and my goodness, is this a party here in the 3-1-5 for these Salt City kids. Well, we've been talking about the Golden Boot Race time and time again in this broadcast. Nagelstad in first with 13th. Then Maryland's Darwin Espinal in second with seven. And now tied for third with Chattanooga's Taylor Gray is Syracuse's very own Caleb Jackson. NJ Kwok wanted the call but doesn't get it. Kafari almost winning it right back. It's a neat little turn from Gray to keep possession. Breaking free is Damian Rodriguez and Macklin Robinson off his line to send that ball into the stratosphere. My goodness. Macklin Robinson reading that very, very well. Looks to be shaken up a little bit. Asking for some assistance from the referee to halt play. The referee isn't going to help just yet. Good sliding challenge from Kafari. Chipped in by Ward, headed right back to him. And Syracuse really have been dominant in this game, but really it's been two scrappy goals. Full credit to Caleb Jackson for capitalizing on those chances. They aren't pretty, but they all count. A 50-50, a poor back pass, and it's 2-0 Syracuse as Macklin Robinson will Get some medical attention. Zachary Reynolds is already motioning to the bench for a substitution as it looks like Danny Gagliardi has his orange goalkeeper jersey in his left hand. They're going to wait it out and see if Robinson can continue, but Gagliardi is getting prepared in case that moment comes where he must come on. The 2020 MLS Super Draft pick by the Vancouver Whitecaps. As Robinson has helped to his feet and a squad that is already short in stature. Not many players on the roster. Of course, Kyle Newell already out with an injury. Starting defender now might face another uphill battle with half of their goalkeeping staff. Maybe out for a little bit. At least out for the rest of this one, it looks like as Gagliardi is warming up with some volleys on the touchline. Robinson helped off, but standing up on his own two feet. Always good to see. Looks like he just caught a little bit of the challenge there when he was clearing that ball away. Give credit to Macklin Robinson for doing what he had to do. You know, assuming all the risks. You know, doing what he had to do to just get out there and clear that ball away. It was going to be important because Moriam Moosey was struggling to get there in time, and you know, good for Macklin Robinson to show character and 
clear that out of out of the way, out of harm's way. And he really hasn't had much to do tonight, and full credit to him when the team needed him to step up as the sweeper keeper. Definitely for sure, and the sweeper keeper is the best way to put it as Daniel Gagliardi is making his way into the game. And Gagliardi, of course, the next guy against Macklin Robinson, two very skilled goalkeepers. You know, I talked to him on the latest episode of Fuller Files, and so we have a young fan next to, right. Start right, the drums up. Near near us, very, very happy to. Uh, Where's the percussion section? Have, uh, <laughs> have Daniel Gagliardi here with us. But nonetheless, I mean, you know, like I, well, like I mentioned, Daniel Gagliardi, he, 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 he's really been through it all in, in terms of his path to soccer. And, and, you know, he's been doing a great job. And he's actually crossed paths with Peter Fuller so many times. You know, between the top flight to the bottom flight in U.S. soccer. And you know, here he is now making his way to replace Malcolm Robinson as a, as a substitute came on for Syracuse, Alex Hector Who replaced Juan Louis, who put in a solid shift today. Didn't show up on the stat sheet, but had a great performance nonetheless. As Ward lost his bearings in the area. Great move by Kafari to open up space. But the pass is under hit, and he's got to recover. Chattanooga come right back the other way. Robinson, the option on the overlap. The pass behind him, but keeps the attack alive. The back heel and a physical challenge from, looked like Sean Russell, but play will continue. Another physical challenge, and that one's going to be a foul. Looked like Caleb Jackson at fault. A little too much there from Caleb Jackson. Not really pleading much of a, of a case. Kind of knew it. Flick by Dixon. On for Rodriguez. Robertson. Back for Spielman. As the back line for the pulse condenses a little bit. Miscommunication though between Kafari and Satrustegi. Could be dangerous as well. 50-50 headers. I don't know who's underneath it. As we are into the 85th minute here at Laser Stadium. Shock and awe on the cards if this result holds. We talk about Satrustegi being the substitute. Right now he's making his 12th appearance for the Pulse this season. Of course, you know, he's had experience playing soccer in his home country of Spain, playing for his boyhood club Osasuna back when they were in the fourth tier. And this year they're at the top tier of La Liga, which is how, you know, I've talked to him about that and he's very happy about it. Quite a climb they've had in recent years. For sure, for sure. And, you know, I talked to him about it. He's, he's very, very thrilled. First thing I said to him when I, when I saw him today was Osasuna. And he was, <laughs> he was, yeah, he was just, yeah, let's go. He's like, yeah, they're in La Liga. La trying Liga. to think of a, a similar story, really. I, I guess Venezi are on a climb of their own. They're almost, they're almost, uh, almost the same level. Not quite the same jump. Nottingham Forest as well. The once the kings of European football back in the late '70s have come back to the Premier League this season for the first time in a while. Venezia, Salernitana, you could talk about as well. Lecce came up this year as well. Cremonese. Obviously, Rocco, our resident Serie A expert. King of Tom, I'm an Italian. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great league. Very exciting league to watch. Who's your money on for the Scudetto this season? For the Scudetto? Uh, I mean, it's... I, you can't count out Roma. It's got to be Roma, right? That's well, exactly what I, I was thinking. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be Roma. I don't know if it, it has to be, but... You know, you... Considering all the moves this summer, I mean, Dybala, it's very good, man. Mourinho, Mourinho, <laughs> Mourinho ver knows very well what he's doing with the club, but you know, Inter has Lukaku back. Juventus made some great signings as well. I mean, not to keep harping on my Manchester United friends, I can't even imagine what they're going through after that Brentford match. But one of my favorite all-time quotes from Mourinho is how he managed to get second with Manchester United, and how people don't recognize that enough with that team. Mm -hmm who now currently sit at the bottom of the Premier League table. I mean, we're two matches in, but and it's on goal difference. But still, you know, 
you got Cristiano Ronaldo as a forward there. It's a little bit worrying. Worrying for Syracuse as well as Chattanooga step up. Plenty of time to get at least one and maybe more. Right place at the right time to cut away the first ball. Second cross still on the offing. Bounces towards Taylor Gray who skies it over the protective netting. Taylor Gray trying to play the volley, but you know, in a situation like that, ball's a little too high. If it starts high, it's going to go high, unfortunately, and it's not easy to kind of bring that ball down. You know, when it's, very, when it's so, so high, you have to really get over that ball. And reasonably so, it goes well over into the netting, out of play. Foul in midfield, offers the restart for Chattanooga. Brett Jones for Nick Spielman. Martinez fades the sliding challenge. It could have been rough for McDonald. Sen didn't catch the man or the ball. Spielman again. Rodriguez drops back in support. Very controlled possession from Chattanooga, but time is not on their side. This could be a second straight defeat. And the first defeat away from home this season for CFC. De Silva chasing down Ward. Ward keeps it in play, one on one. Gets the cross away to the back post. Headed straight up. Still danger present for the Pulse. Chattanooga doing everything they can. Robertson. Rodriguez dispossessed in the area cleanly by Moosey. Who's had his track record against this team in the box and stayed on one foot that time. Well, there's definitely going to be discussion for sure as to that Morian Moosey yellow card could have and should have or would have been a red. But, you know, we talk about records and, you know, how this could be Syracuse's essentially their first loss on the road. And this could be, I'm sorry, Chattanooga's first loss on the road, excuse me. You know, this could be Syracuse's first win that's not against Flower City if this result holds, of course. Into added time. Looks like a four on the fourth official scoreboard. Oh, look at this. This could be dangerous. It's Alex Atrustegi keeping his feet in the area after feeling the contact. He gives away a goal kick, but I think that's something that's not really talked about enough when forwards especially stay on their feet in the box. That contact nowhere near, of course, for a penalty, but still. Well, it could have been had had he not stayed on his feet. I mean, you could see you could see Richard Dixon's arms kind of extend a little bit on Satrustagi's back. You know, had Satrustagi, had it been enough to knock Satrustagi off his feet, could have opened up some room for discussion for sure. Yellow Kit still striding forward to Silva with the ball at his feet now. Numbers at the edge of the area for Syracuse. De Silva keen to hold it up. Did it take a deflection? Yes, it did. I didn't know De Silva could do that. <laughs> yeah, the step over, the little drag back. It was and nice. Then, and then the nutmeg and had that deflect off the defender and draw a corner. I mean, that's great play there by De Silva. It's too bad he posted on Instagram today. He could have waited one more day and had a couple more clips. <laughs> oh, there's a shove off the wow. ball. Surprise, the play will continue. It's just opened up for a shot, and oh my goodness! What a strike! Unbelievable! Stephen McDonald with a corker, and the final nail in the coffin. Wow. Yeah, De Silva got shoved down, but 
You know, McDonald did a great job to get that ball and stick with it. That was an unreal shot. Somehow managed to keep his footing by the byline, evade a couple defenders, and then absolutely leathered it into the top shelf. No goalkeeper on earth is keeping that one out. He just drilled that one to the top corner there. And it looks like we'll have another substitution for Syracuse this time. Looks like it's Christian Wagelin making an appearance, coming in for Caleb Jackson. And about two minutes left in this one by my count. The defender comes on for the forward. Jackson won't have a chance to get his hat trick tonight, but gets a well-earned round of applause from the fans in attendance tonight. After the goal, you just saw Sagistegui on the near sideline over here. After he got up, just waving his arms to the crowd, saying, yes, our pleasure. Our pleasure, Syracuse. Thanks for coming out tonight. Stephen McDonald rather scores his second of the season. The best off the ball striker on this team in the words of Michael Kafari, proves his worth on the ball. And the late game sub puts in the insurance goal for the pulse. Quack is taken down off the ball. Appeals from Tate Robertson. Not sure he has much to complain about in that one. And frustration showing from the Sky Blues. Yeah, now here's where things are starting to get a little bit frustrating for, for Chattanooga. Clearly they just want this game over with. You know, you're, in, you're in stoppage time of the second half and you're down by three. And there they got it, the final whistle. The improbable becomes the inevitable. David versus Goliath has nothing on Syracuse versus Chattanooga. And a massive three points in the playoff hunt for the underdogs at home. It finishes at later Laser Stadium, Syracuse pulls three, Chattanooga FC nothing. Despite the red card, a complete performance, might I say, the best we've seen at home this year from Syracuse against the top dog in the East. It was always gonna take some discipline, some outstanding individual and team play, but my goodness, were they up for the challenge. Absolutely, and third time is a charm for Syracuse against Chattanooga. My goodness, what a performance by Everyone on this roster, they all came out right from the jump, right from the get-go with that Caleb Jackson goal in the fifth minute. And of course, the yellow card playing a factor in momentum and just everything that followed afterwards. And, you know, they, they, you know, they were tested. Syracuse was tested. You can't say that they weren't considering the disadvantages and, and everything that Chattanooga was, was under at that point. You could tell that Chattanooga was still in it. They understood, you know, and, and they, they even looked a, a little surprised considering Syracuse's great play, great pressure, and, you know, they after that, for, after that first goal, you could tell that they were like, wow, like, you know, the, we, we actually have a game to play, and they did, and, you know, they, they did a great job afterwards, especially after the, the red card, and, you know, even though, you know, despite all that, considering all the, all things considered, Great effort there by Chattanooga to just keep their pressure, keep their possession, because they did a great job at, at, at recovery and, and, of course, in possession, despite everything going against them. Chattanooga takes the lonely 14-hour drive home and will regroup to play Michigan Stars FC on the 20th of August, that one kicking off at 7.30. Syracuse's next game against Flower City on the 20th of August as well at 6 Eastern. But before we say our final goodbyes, we're going to send it down one more time to our fantastic sideline reporter, Jaden Becker, who is with a, safe to say, elated Coach Fuller. We'll hear more from him right about now-ish. 
Coach, as the chill falls on the pitch here, the hearts of many are, are warmed by the victory here this evening. Coach, I have to ask you, how are you feeling after this one? I feel really good. I mean, it's a, it's a, and obviously people are going to make a big deal about it because it's Chattanooga and I was there and everything else. I think maybe the first game we played them, it was maybe a little bit nostalgic. This is, this is a game we needed three points. We have 10 games left coming into tonight and we need points if we, if we're serious about wanting to make the playoffs. Um, and I do believe that that's a possibility. And especially when we give them a performance tonight against a very, very good team, one of the top two teams in the league, I, I, I hope the guys have taken heart now and believe that, that it can happen. So, Coach, early on a really big goal, yeah. early on by Caleb Jackson. Speak on his performance and how he was able to contribute here this evening. He's terrific. I mean, it, listen, Caleb's a really good player. Um, and Caleb's been very unlucky over the last two or three years of his career because he's, he's had some serious health issues. Uh, um, leg, knee, you know, uh, broken leg. So he's, he's, he's a guy, if, if you were with him every day, you, 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 it would warm your heart to see him have the kind of success that he's having right now. And uh, uh, because he's earned it and he's put the time in and put the work in. So I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly happy for him. Coach, where do you see this win ranking for the Pulse as a whole this season? And honestly, obviously, franchise history. Well, I think the key thing is for us, it's our fourth win in our NISA games. Mm -hmm. And I think the win that puts us into the playoffs, if that were to happen, would be, the, would be special. This is one that we really needed to have, and we worked hard this week, and we got it. Um, so it's, it's, it's special because it's three points. Um, we've got to go out and try and get three against Flower City. I thought, you know, they uh, obviously had a tough night last night against, uh, against Maryland. But the thing about it is, regardless of scoreline, they've always played us tough. They put it down, they try and play, and it's not going to be an easy game over at their place. And, and especially where we've had a bit of success now, I'll be interested to see how our guys, how our guys deal with it. And, and uh, um, anybody can beat anybody on any given day. I think we proved it here tonight. And, uh, um, and, and they beat Chattanooga and Chattanooga. So um, nothing, nothing is going to come easy or cheap. That indeed, Coach. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.